One Newton piece of clay is hurled horizontally at a 9 Newtons block. So I have a block here. That's 9 Newtons. It is at rest on a horizontal surface. Now we shoot a 1 Newton piece of clay. Upon impact, the clay sticks to the block. So it sticks to the block. And the block moves a distance of 9.8 meters before coming to rest. So this is 9.8 meters. We're told that the coefficient of kinetic friction between the block and the surface, mu, k, is 0 0.5. We want to determine the initial speed of the piece of clay. This problem is very much similar to the case of the ballistic pendulum. In both cases, we have, in this case, a clay. There it was a bullet. It strikes a block. There, in the case of the ballistic pendulum, the block swings upward. And the information given to what height it swings allows us to determine the speed of the bullet. The information we're given here is, after the clay collides with the block, we're told how far the block moves before coming to rest. So when it comes to rest, its v is 0. Immediately after the impact, it moves with some velocity v0. So we're, so we're given the final velocity, 0. We're given the displacement. We want to find v0. But also, we're given the coefficient of kinetic friction, so we can determine the force of friction. The force of friction, fk, is mu k fn. Now, fn, I have mg down, and I have fn up. So this means that this means that fn equals mg because there is no vertical motion. So this is mu k mg. Since this is the only force acting on the block, of course, besides mg and fn, but they cancel each other out. So the net force acting on the block is just the force of kinetic friction. This is equal to ma. So I can determine the acceleration. It's mu k g. But of course, the force of kinetic friction is to the left. So the acceleration is to the left, and it is a negative acceleration. So now we know the acceleration. We know the final velocity. We know the displacement, so we can find the initial velocity. So I have v squared minus v0 squared is equal to 2a times the displacement d. V square is 0, the final velocity, minus V0 square is equal to 2 times A, which is minus mu kg times the displacement D. So this means that V0 square is 2 mu kg 
g d. Now, this is 2 times half. g is 9.8, and d is 9.8. So this is just 9.8 squared, so v0 is 9.8 meters per second. So the block moves with an initial velocity of 9.8 meters per second. I could obtain the same result using the work energy theorem. The net force acting is a force of friction. So the work done by the force of friction is it's a force of friction times the displacement. And it's a negative work because the force of friction is to the left, displacement is to the right. And this goes into changing the kinetic energy. So I will obtain the same answer if I do that. So anyway, now we have V0, which is the velocity of the block with the clay attached to it immediately after the impact. So now that I know the velocity, of, I have this collision now. Let's call this initial, this velocity of the clay, V. This velocity here is zero, so I have V1, V2, zero. After impact, they stick together, and they're moving with velocity that I call V0, which is 9.8. So what is V1? I use conservation of momentum now. I have, this has mass M1, this has mass M2. So I have M1, V1, plus M2, V2 is M1 plus M2 V0. This is the total momentum before collision. This is the total momentum after collision. V2 is 0. So V1 is M1 plus M2 times V0 over M1. M1 is it's 1 times 9.8. I can multiply by g up and down. So multiply by g up, multiply by g down. M1g is 1 newton. M2g is 9 newtons. So that's 10 newtons. M1g is 1 newton. V0 is 9.8. So I end up with 98 meters per second. So the initial velocity of the piece of clay is 98 meters per second.